Hi students, in this video we're going to use anti-differentiation to solve a bunch of practical problems involving displacement, velocity and acceleration. So what we should be able to do, students, after watching this video is determine um, displacement functions given either velocity functions or acceleration functions and some sort of initial conditions. Alright, so some things to remember that anti-differentiating is the opposite of deriving. Good thing to remember. Also remember displacement is a measure of it's a measure of position. So we talk about the origin being zero. Um, to the left that will be a negative displacement, to the right that will be a positive displacement, or in another way, um, downwards might be a negative displacement if we're moving up and down, and upwards might be positive. The key thing is displacement is measuring a distance from the origin or from some point, but it's also giving a direction where positive could be up or to the right, and negative could be to the left or downwards. Uh, velocity is a rate of change, so it's a derivative of displacement with respect to time. Or it's just how the position is changing with time, right? That's this. It's like speed. Speed is the number, but um, velocity also has a uh, sign, either positive or negative. It's got a direction. So in the same way as displacement, Positive velocity will be moving right, negative displacement will be moving left, or up or down, depending on how you want to define the problem, but positive and negative in opposite directions in terms of velocity. You should also be able to use initial conditions to determine specific antiderivatives, which was covered in a previous video. Alright, so big things to know when we're looking at displacement, velocity, and acceleration problems. So since the velocity function is the derivative of displacement, it also follows that the velocity that the displacement function is the integral of the velocity function. Okay. So the uh, displacement function is the integral, it's the antiderivative of the velocity question of the velocity function. Now if we want to know a specific equation for displacement, we need to know some initial condition. So once we've got our um, antiderivative and we've got our constant plus c, we can substitute some value in, some value we know that we were given about the initial position. And then from there, we can work out the um, displacement function. Now, the key note is that if an object starts at the origin, then that just means that at x at time zero, so our uh, displacement, x at time t equals 0 is equal to 0. That, what's, that's what it means by starting at the origin. Now, the other thing is, students, we can also extend this to acceleration problems too, because we can say that our velocity function, because our acceleration is the derivative of velocity, we can say our velocity function is the integral of our acceleration function with respect to time. Now, obviously, then, if we've got our acceleration function, we can anti-differentiate it to get our velocity function. And once we have our velocity function, if we want to find displacement, we just anti-differentiate it one more time. All right, so let's apply this in an example. So we have to determine the displacement function. Um, if the velocity function is given by below, and if the particle starts at the origin. So we know that our displacement equation, x of t, is going to equal the integral of our velocity function with respect to time. So that's the integral of t cubed minus t dt. That's going to equal t to the 4 divided by 4 minus t squared over 2 plus see our oh, integration constant there. So uh, from there, we've got our the start of our displacement equation. Now we're told that it starts at the origin. So that means uh, x of 0 is going to equal to 0. Right? At time 0, we're starting at position 0 at the origin. So substituting that in, so x 0 equals 0. So 0 equals 0 to the 4 over 4. 0 to squared over 2 plus c, that just means 0 equals c. 
So therefore, my displacement equation is going to be t over 4, 4, so t to the 4 over 4, minus t squared over 2. And there's no plus c because we just worked out the c value of 0. So in some ways we're just finding a specific antiderivative, but we're doing it in the context of a displacement velocity um, sort of, uh, set of equations. All right, one more. So this time we've got the acceleration of an object. It's moving in a straight line given by this function. So it's a bit more complex, it's an exponential, but we're still applying the same steps. We're finding specific antiderivatives. Now we have to determine the displacement function. Okay, the displacement function. If the object started three meters to the left of the origin and it started traveling at a speed of two meters per second to the right. So what we've got here is a bunch, couple of initial conditions. So our at x naught, our displacement at t equals zero, that's three meters to the left. So to the left, that's our negative direction. So at our displacement at time zero is going to equal negative three. Now this next part about um, the velocity, we're told that the velocity at time zero we're moving two meters per second to the right. So to the right, that's positive. So our initial velocity um, is going to be equal to two. So that information we can use to help us find those specific derivatives as we go through this problem. All right, so we've got our acceleration. Now, we can't go straight from acceleration to displacement. We have to integrate it once first to get velocity, then integrate it once more to get to our displacement. So we have to end up integrating it twice. So our, our velocity function is going to be the, equal to the integral of my acceleration function, which is 27 e to the negative 3 t dt. All right, and that's going to be, well, it's an exponential, so it stays the same e to the negative 3t, but we divide by the derivative of the power. The derivative of negative 3t is negative 3, plus c on the end. 27 divided by negative 3 is negative 9, e to the negative 3t, plus c. Now, from there, we need to substitute in our initial value. So we knew it, that we were told in the question that at time 0, the velocity was 2. So substitute that in. So v0 equals 2, so that means 2 is going to equal negative 9e, e, negative 3 times 0 plus c. Um, that'll just be e to the 0, e to the 0 is 1, negative 9 times 1 is just negative 9 plus c, so 11 must be equal to c. So therefore, my velocity equation has to be uh, negative 9e to the negative 3t plus 11. All right, now we've got our velocity equation. So once we've got our velocity equation, we can just integrate that again to get our displacement equation. I'll just do it underneath here. So the integral of, so my displacement equation will be the integral of negative 9e to the negative 3t plus 11 dt, that's going to equal negative 9e to the negative 3t, an exponential of a, so integral in, or antiderivative of an exponential is just going to be itself, divided by the derivative of the power, negative 3, integral of 11 is just going to be 11t, plus c on the end there, simplifying 3e to the negative 3t plus 11t plus c is my displacement equation. And then from there, to get my value for c, going back to remember that x naught equals oh, my starting position. When time was zero, my displacement was negative three, so substitute that in. Negative three equals three, e to the negative three times zero, plus 11 times zero, plus c, that's e to the zero, that's just one, negative three, equals 3 plus c, so negative 6 equals c. So therefore, my displacement equation 
is xt equals 3e to the negative 3t plus 11t minus 6. Right. So there is my displacement equation. From there, we could be asked questions like, um, what is the position at 2 seconds and substitute it 2? We could be asked questions like, what is the maximum displacement? So maximum displacement will be when the derivative is 0, so we derive it, find whether it equals 0, and do things like that. But once we get our displacement functions, there might be other questions we get asked, but the key thing is we've got our displacement function, that's what we were asked to do. All right, so after watching this video, you should be able to determine displacement given either acceleration or velocity um, functions in, in addition to some initial conditions.